Yeah, hi everybody. I just want to continue on. This is the second part of this little uh, group of, of articles about uh, Barack Obama and his uh, main foreign policy advisor. This man's a big, it's a big new Brzezinski, and that's uh, quite a mouthful, isn't it? Anyway, uh, what I've done is I've pulled up a map out of an ordinary atlas here on Iran, and it's just to demonstrate really my little. What, what, what I'm on about and uh, <clears throat> what I want to do is I, I want to go around the countries that are, are adjacent to Iran that actually border on it okay and we start off with Saudi Arabia I'll go in a clockwise direction we start off with Saudi Arabia now Saudi Arabia as you can see it's <coughs> a huge country uh, it's, it's almost I think it's bigger than Iran and it's the main oil producing country in the world the largest proven reserves of oil in the world and uh, it's administered by the, the Saud family and they really are basically agents of America they're uh, basically a puppet a puppet government essentially and uh, everything and anything in America wants done they do it uh, especially key things and they have a big relationship with America for defense buying their jets and their bombers and their uh, <coughs> rocket rocketry and all the rest of it okay so uh, that's that's one country and then we move on to Iraq and in Iraq oh by the way in Saudi Arabia they have a big a big the Americans have a huge military presence that bases in, in Saudi Arabia and they've also got uh, I think on un, un, unsubstantiated they have missile sites and various things in Saudi Arabia and they also have access to obviously to a lot of the Saudi airfields so the other thing then is we, when we move on to Iraq we I think there's about 200,000 American troops still in Iraq and they've some of the biggest bases in the world there and uh, that gives them direct access uh, to the Gulf of Oman as you can see so <coughs> that means there are ships and all that can come up there and supply them if, if, if need be uh, then we move on to Turkey and we, well Turkey is basically a, a NATO country it's effectively a, a full NATO member so it will do exactly again what America pickens and uh, then we go on round to the likes of uh, Azerbaijan and Turkmenistan and basically they're old uh, old style they're, they'd be very neutral in any in any uh, conflict in this region because they're old uh, Soviet states and they're not really powerful or anything like that and the Americans would just would not pose any threat or anything they would just wouldn't get involved in it, and that's it they would play with a neutral role in anything that, was, that would develop in that, that immediate area and then we move down to Afghanistan and we know now from what has happened in Afghanistan there's going to be 200,000 troops at least there <clears throat> the vast bulk of them been American and that's what the Americans are openly declaring. I mean, there could be a lot more, but anyway, that's what they're telling us. And then we have, uh, you know, a, a lot. The, the balance are NATO troops. So whatever, whatever America does from Afghanistan, there'll be no, there'll be no kick up from the, the NATO troops. And then we move on to Pakistan, and Pakistan eff effectively is another <coughs> pseudo puppet state of America. Um, it would like to believe otherwise, but. Uh, the only th the only thing about Pakistan is it does have a nuclear a nuclear uh, capability, so the Americans obviously will keep a very close eye on it. But uh, really, at the end of the day, it's going to do what America tells it because it's very much indebted to uh, America and, and America uh, American largesse, as it were. And then we move on around to India, and <coughs> well, India India is not going to play any role in this because it's not necessary because the bottom part of we covered the, the western approaches to to Iran to Saudi Arabia and through Iraq and Turkey and then we covered a good bit of the eastern approaches and the southern approaches obviously are in the Arabian Sea there and the Gulf of Oman and they're they're well well looked after there's at least three Nimitz classes Nimitz class uh, aircraft carriers down there and they're nuclear powered aircraft carriers from the American fleet um, from the American Navy and uh, they have 11 of those Nimitz type they're the biggest aircraft carriers in the world they are, they're over 100,000 tons and there are 11 of them and on active service at any time there's normally 8 
the other two normally are in for getting refits and getting fixed up. So, uh, and three of them are at the moment down in that region and are permanently there. I think there's one in the Gulf, uh, the Gulf of Oman, and then I think two of them are in the, the Arabian Sea down there. So, effectively what has happened is, uh, when we look at this we can see there's been an effective uh, encirclement of, of uh, Iran. You know, we've got Saudi Arabia, we've got Iraq, we've got Turkey, we've got uh, Afghanistan, we've got Pakistan, and we have these these uh, three, if, if not more, like I'm sure they could call up more, three or four or five aircraft carrier down, down in, in, in the Gulf of Oman and the Arabian Sea. So effectively Iran is technically surrounded, and this has taken a long time to do, but anyway, we're going to continue on, and we're going to show a little chart uh, about why this has happened. All right, and uh, I'm going to have, what I'm going to do after that, I'll put a link up. Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, I put the little link up there. It's to a uh, page out of the World Factbook. And uh, what it basically tells you is the proven oil reserves in the world by country. And the, the top one, obviously, is Saudi Arabia. The next one down is Canada. And the third one is none other than Air. And I believe that's the reason why all this has gone on at the moment, why uh, these extra troops are getting sent down into Afghanistan. What's happening in Pakistan and the whole, what, what's going on basically in this world. This is a, a real boiling, a really boiling pot at the moment, that whole area down there. And I think in the next, in the foreseeable future, this immediate, t immediate uh, time scale here, 2010, I think major world events are going to be played out here and uh, I think what's going to happen is I think there's going to be some sort of uh, either a coup or some sort of internal power struggle within Iran, uh, some sort of populist, maybe populist movement sponsored by America and probably funded by America and Britain and uh, it's very much in their interest for this to happen and what will happen then I think as a result of that there will be a big world event like a 9-11 happen somehow that it'll get blamed on Iran. That'll be the excuse for them to invade it. And of course they will say to the world, oh we're coming to the aid of the democratic process that's going on in Iran against the mad mullahs and the mad Muslims. Okay? But the real reason would be they want the puppet government installed for the oil. <coughs> it has the right now it has the imprint of this man here. Brzezinski has his imprint all over it, right? This is what this man does. This is what this man specializes in. This man almost single-handedly beat the Russians. I mean, from a geo-strategic point of view, he beat the Russians in, in this place in the nineties. He supplied Osama bin Laden with Stinger missiles and the Mujahideen, and then subsequently Al Qaeda and all the money that Osama bin, Lada wa Osama bin Lada wanted. I mean, that's how they knew all about Osama bin Lada. Anyway, the bottom line about it is, at the end of the day, it has his imprint all over. It stinks to high heaven. It's just, to me, it's very, very obvious. People are talking about them down there for, uh, they're in Af Afghanistan for the, the heroin poppy and all that. Look, the CIA may be involved to fund their covert operations to do, but I I'm talking about major state geopolitical uh, policy. They're there for one thing, one thing only. They want that oil. They can't get the oil, nobody else is going to have it. And I can assure you that Iran is not going to be allowed to openly uh, trade that oil on bourses for some sort of dollar or, or some sort of non-dollar denominator. In other words, trying to undermine the reserve currency of the world. Please believe me, that is not going to happen. All right? It might happen, but there'll be a big WAR beforehand. There'll be a big WAR beforehand. And what we're going to see at the moment is, we're going to see the roll up to this. This is all going to unfold. We're going to see more and more and more destabilization of the political uh, events inside Iran. And as I say, this big 9-11 thing has to happen. Has Something on a, on a par with 9-11, on a world scale, has to happen. They allow them to make the intervention. Gonna watch this space and see what happens. Don't forget, this is the eminence Greece. This is the man behind the, the, the power of the throne. 
for America's foreign policy. Don't forget his name. It's the big new Brzezinski. All right? We'll talk more. Bye.